Having a good time? Excellent. My name is David Levine. I'm a science fiction writer. And I have about 40 stories published. I've got one in the issue of Analog that's on the stands right now. And on, in January of this year, I spent two weeks on Mars. Well, simulated Mars. And I'm here to share with you some of my vacation slides. <laughs> the Mars Desert Research Station is located in the Utah desert. It's a, it's a station run by the Mars Society, an international nonprofit. Where, they, where real scientists do real science in simulated Mars conditions. We had, there's six people in each two-week rotation. We had Steve, a university professor. Loxon is a heart valve engineer who has summited Kilimanjaro and is building a gyrocopter in his garage. And um, Paul is a, is a quarterback. Um, Diego is from Colombia. Um, Bianca is from, is, is from Belgium, and I'm from here. The habitat is 30 feet in diameter and two stories tall. It's got about as many square feet as my southeast Portland bungalow for six people for two weeks, and you can't go outside without a spacesuit. The upstairs is divided into two halves. This half is our living room, dining room, kitchen, workroom, everything. We have six webcams that are showing us what we're doing 24-7. Downstairs, we have the science labs, the, um, the uh, airlocks, and the one bathroom that we all shared with no shower. On my right, you see that's my bedroom, the one with the upper bunk. On the other side is the one with the lower bunk. Each of these bedrooms, you see, has just enough space for a little bit of storage, just enough space to change your clothes. We didn't spend a lot of time in there. That was all the private space that we had. This is me at my duty station. Because of my background in high tech, I was in charge of the computers, the internet, and the webcams. I was the one that filed our daily reports. I blogged extensively. I was in charge of the crew Twitter feed. And I rewrote a lot of the manuals. <laughs> I was also in charge of all the small electronics. I, wrote the, I, I was in charge of the radios and in charge of the spacesuit backpacks. The spacesuit backpacks broke down all the time. I was dealing with blown fuses, broken wires, torn hoses. And taking up, this was taking up a lot of my time every day. Going outside, though, was the highlight of our day. Even though it was a pain, you had to, it took about 30 minutes to suit up and decompress to go outside. But tromping around on simulated Mars was the best thing. We tried to get out as often as we could. We were breathing ordinary Utah air, of course, but we had fans in the backpacks to keep the air circulating. If we didn't, it would get real stuffy in there, and the helmets would fog up even more often than they actually did. Also, if your hat falls down, you can't, you, you, with the helmet, you can't push the hat up out of your eyes, as you can see from the picture. This is me and Paul on our first EVA. Uh, with, the, with the sound of, of the air in my helmet and with the dry sand crunching under my boots, there was no human habitation or animals visible for miles. We really were like on an alien planet. We had these three rovers to extend our rage, spirit, opportunity, and voyager. <laughs> they were so much fun. I was scared of them at first, but it was like, it was like the Indiana Jones ride at Disneyland, only on Mars. It was great. <laughs> Uh, we were doing real science on these EVAs. We had to repair the radio telescope while we were there. Um, we were all human guinea pigs in a study on how much harder it is to do science work in a spacesuit. And Steve actually found a 150 million year old microfossil, a thing called an ostracod. But I, I was surprised to find that I loved the desert. It was so beautiful. It, the arid vistas, the spectacular rock formations, the colors kept changing. Magnificent desolation is what Buzz Aldrin said about the moon. And we were out there all by ourselves. We didn't have landline. We didn't have cable. We didn't have cell phone service. Our only contact with Earth was via a slow satellite internet. If anything went wrong, we had to fix it ourselves. We had to be the protagonists of our own science fiction story. It really was an awful lot like Mars. I saw a bird once. Apart from that, there was no life anywhere. Um, but at night, there were no lights. The only lights were a few lights from the, from the windows of the habitat, and the stars were just amazing. Life on Mars is a constant battle with the environment and the equipment. The rovers and the generators and the plumbing, between the dust and the extreme temperatures, they would break down all the time. And we had to fix them using our ingenuity and our improvisation, using only the tools and materials we had with us. But despite all the hassles, despite the, the spacesuits and the dehydrated food and the cramped conditions, dude, we were on Mars. We were, 
We were space geeks and we were just loving it. We were so thrilled to have this opportunity. And although I learned a lot and I had a lot of fun, the best part of it was my crewmates, my Mars family. These are six extraordinary individuals and it was my privilege to serve with them. And I hope someday I'll be able to serve with them again on the real Mars. <laughs>